Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play The Red Strings Club. Before we settle into today's episode, can we just take a second to appreciate... ...this. Damn, it sets a good mood. Fantastic soundtrack on this game. Uh, so first, I, I want to offer a quick apology to Cinder and any of my other patrons who weren't credited properly in last month's videos. Uh, I honestly just forgot to update them, and Cinder brought it to my attention recently, so sorry again. I'll try to keep more on top of that in the future. Moving on, though, with our conversation, this is Diana from Supercontinent Limited, and we're going to ask her some questions about what we learned last time, about the Social Psyche Welfare Program, the Mirror Neuron Algorithm, and Ariadne's death. And we're going to faint a little bit about Brandi's mental state as a pretext to start this conversation off and to actually delve into the meat of this. Don't you worry, I'm really surprised that Brandi is acting that way. My work will soon make everything all right. Oh, you mean SBW, right? Nice little segue. So who the fuck is leaking this info? I don't think it leaked, I'm just, you know, too good an information dealer. I mean, that's still a leak, but yeah. So you got it from someone on the inside? You know, I never reveal my sources. That's also why you're safe talking with me. Ah, that's such a good line. We really got in with a good angle to start this off. So Diana is the director of this program. Which we have now made a note of. So we could dive into Ariadne's death, but... That's a really abrupt subject switch. So we're going all in on this. Social psyche welfare is the greatest revolution in the area of human comfort according to the program director of it. SPW is able to teleport feelings like depression, anxiety, rage, and keep them in check using only the power of your own physiology. It's all natural, no secondary effects. <laughs> One of the follow-ups is, don't you think this is all a bit unnatural? <laughs> we'll get to that. But this top question... I think that's one of the most pressing ones to follow up with. It's not going to affect individually individuality at all. This is less intrusive than the average antidepressant the city's inhabitants swallow every day. So you're saying removing an important part of our mood spectrum isn't going to change our personalities? I didn't say that. It'll help us access our better selves do you enjoy being sad or do you enjoy being sad i love this question this is so much more interesting of a choice than what 99 percent of video games offer because none of us want to be sad but i personally don't know if i'd want to live in a world without sadness I don't know if I could if I could be a complete person without the capacity to be sad. How much can you love something if losing it doesn't hurt you a little bit? And Donovan goes full, this is a crime against humanity. <laughs> he's got a really interesting perspective on this because he's going much more poetic with it, choosing to see a sort of beauty in sadness. Which makes sense, like a lot of us will enthusiastically seek out art that arouses some pain or, or sadness in us. It's a fundamental part of the human experience, so... In this one, no one will be willing to fight or disrupt anything. Pretty convenient for corpse and governments alike, isn't it? The fine print of eternal happiness is absolute obedience. This is a very, um... Uh, this is this is kind of out of a uh, not a, oh no, no I am I'm right uh, a brave new world by Huxley 
Donovan's looking at this with a perspective that social psyche welfare is Soma. SPW is fucking worldwide peace, according to Dana, to Diana. The world needs disagreement to keep evolving. Hmm, world peace just means eternal slumber. Let me stop you right there before you start making a plea for war. You know that's not what I mean. Only that you just said world peace is bad for humanity. Yeah, so we had some, some discord in that conversation. Donovan took that in a direction. Depression is a source of inspiration. It's just an unhealthy myth. I love that. Yes. Maslow's Pyramid is not actually bulletproof as, like, psychological theory, but still, she makes a good point here. You don't have to be depressed to write a dark tale. You don't have to hate to draw violence. Art is emotion through the filter of calm focus. Don't necessarily agree with that either. What experience, uh, what experiences is the artist supposed to distill if they can't feel any of those things? She says, haven't we all felt enough of that already? But what about new generations? And this is where things get even more interesting. I don't see the problem. First of all, it's the government who will determine the minimum age to benefit from SPW. But in any, any case, art doesn't exist to amuse you. It's but a reflection of the times. If humanity evolves, it's only natural that art evolves with it. There's a lot to unpack in this conversation already. You've really been drinking your own bathwater, huh? I don't understand why you're so radically against total fucking happiness, man. They are just at an impasse. Being human is all about hating, crying, fearing, and then loving and laughing and ephemeral fucking euphoria. Well, guess you'll have to wait and see before you realize how good this is for all of us. They both make some interesting points and some really terrible ones. <laughs> And yeah, this is the most boomer-ass thing he could have said. It's unnatural. So yeah, we're... F I'm glad to concede that point. I'm glad that it lets you concede that you've just said some dumb shit. That's so good. I really like how Donovan is rounded out as a character, while still giving you room to steer him. So we could talk about Ariadne now. But first, let's see if we can... if we can instead play off of her fear this time. Whoop, that is going straight on the table. Donovan has got some some really clear, concrete character traits that are mostly stubborn, but not entirely immutable. But he does always have his own point of view on things. And this one, I think, is really interesting. Uh, that the point that he made about um, how this would quash dissent before it can even happen. The, uh, the price of eternal happiness is absolute obedience line. I've heard that applied to different things in real life. And I think the problem that I always have with it is that at its logical extreme, that's just an argument for accelerationism. If people are too happy, they won't fight back. So we have to make sure they maintain the optimal misery levels so we can so they can spark dissent and fight for themselves. Yeah, what are these dubious agendas that your company has? Don't want to add me to the body count, do we? You're among friends here. Just chill. Let's change the subject. Maybe playing on our fear was not the greatest of ideas. Not as though a job like SPW gives me a lot of spare time. Okay, so what does she want from us? 
what do we have to promise? Promise me you won't mention my name when you dig into this. I want to know who the CEO of Supercontinent is. What you'll find online is the CEO is Jack B. Gaynor. But I swear to you he's vanished. No one's seen him for two years. And Supercontinent's strategy became uh, has become more and more aggressive. She can't ask because she's afraid. But in exchange for finding this out for her, she's offered to give us whatever information we want. And she is incredibly nervous about digging into this too much. She thinks that Gaynor has been supplanted somehow. He's on record as the official CEO, but everything's changed so much that she's sure he can't be in charge anymore. The Proxima girl, even if it was an accident, hasn't been the first death in the last few months. Maybe this has something to do with the supercontinent's more nefarious agendas? Mm -hmm. And all of this, mm, they're now doing... It, it, she, like, she half sticks up for them. They're doing it at any cost now, but it's still for the, for the greater good. They're squeezing us to our limits. Like they have a big agenda. Could it be one of the nefarious ones? Are you afraid the stress could put you on the verge of suicide or, or that'll be deemed a hazard to the corpse mission? Supercon and we all believe in the cause. I'm not going to give up. On the contrary, I want to put them back where they were. Handicapped by the humanity the competition lacks. We have to take care of each other, though. That's why I'm coming to you to save Supercontinent. Asking a rogue information broker to aid you in saving a corporation. We're going to help her, though. We're going to help her for the utilitarian purpose that it serves our interests, and also because Diana's an old friend of Donovan's. <laughs> but yeah, that was a really interesting conversation. And they only get more interesting from here as we learn more. I... Mm. The line about how Diana thinks that a scientist has to be cold and calculating and suppress emotion. Thinking about it, and uh, Supercontinent's motto reminds me a lot of Google's "Don't be evil" shtick. We know how that's going. Diana's in a really interesting place, though, because she firmly believes in the mission that she is helming, and she firmly believes that the company she works for, the corporation she works for can be salvaged, that it, ruthless pragmatism is not the only option, that she can inject humanity back into this soulless corporation that's become more aggressive and murderous. Is she right? No. <laughs> I mean, in the context of the game, we're gonna have to wait and see, but in my opinion, no. She cannot. So Akara is now going to quiz us and give us a new skill if we get 7 out of 10 questions right. Because a game without a reward proves to be dull. Uh, it's not a skill so much as it is a thing that will improve our bartending skills. And it's real weird. It's real skeezy. So let's start. 
Is Diana physically attracted to you? She was a little bit flirty. So, let's go with yeah. Is she 100% loyal to Supercontinent? No. She believes in the mission that she's undertaking. Is she proud of social psyche welfare? Absolutely. But she is not beyond dissent. Would Diana be happier without SPW? She doesn't think so. Does she know about the mirror neuron algorithm? Not as far as we're aware. Who's the person she most admires? I know the answer to this question, but it didn't come up in the conversation because of the, the dialogue tree that we went down. What's her favorite spirit? Uh, this one is bourbon. Did Diana lie to you during your conversation? Well, we don't have reason to believe so. What's her greatest fear right now? Her greatest fear is being killed by Supercontinent. And is social psyche welfare as bad as you thought? This one I can't feel since my it's my opinion, right? Yeah. So this one's a freebie. And based on what we learned, it doesn't seem quite that bad, does it? Like, Diana's using it, and she seems functional. But this is certainly concerning, and it warrants further investigation. Yeah, we got 9 out of 10 right. And the one that we didn't get right, we could not have possibly gotten, because it wasn't even in uh, the list of responses to her question. So a car is capable of synthesizing drugs. And in this case, she has synthesized something that Donovan can slip in clients' drinks to give them um, short-term amnesia so that we can explore other dialogue options that would otherwise be mutually exclusive with other things that we're asking. Like I said, it's a little bit skeezy. She's a limited chemical repository, so she's only going to give us these as the reward for passing her quizzes, which will become a little bit more frequent as we have more and more conversations with different clients who pass through the Red Strings Club. And someone else is coming in. Uh, Naima Cross. Who's been shadowing Dana. Diana! Damn it! <laughs> I could send a fake emergency meeting request to her phone. To get her to back away. To get her to go somewhere else. But now, Donovan wants her to come in. Oh, sorry. Koss or Cass? She wants a glass of absinthe on the rocks. She's got expensive taste. Ah. She's a lawyer representing Supercontinent's interests. What was Diana Maya's business here? Apart from serving drinks, I'm, off, I'm also an info broker, so questions have a price tag in this club. Here's my deal. You ask as many questions as you want, then I get to ask that many questions myself. I should inform you that unlike you, I won't be able to disclose any of my clients' sensitive information. Fair enough, although I must let you know that unlike you, I know my way around empathy and subtlety. You risk leaking more information than you know. <laughs> He's kind of a douche. Let's go. What was her business here? We're definitely not telling her anything too revealing. So, just an old friend. She immediately is like, don't lie to me. 
I won't lie to you either. Except that was the truth. Friendship might sound alien in your world, but we still keep loving each other at street level. It's... it's more of a half-truth. So, we could try lying here. We could tell her about Ariadne's findings, which I'm gonna opt to do. The agent managed to access some juicy intel from one of your executives about social psyche welfare and the mirror neuron algorithm. Ringing any bells? That's enough. Your ellipses are quite revealing, you know that. Where is Johanna Septis? Remember? Do you remember Johanna? We've, we've seen her before. It's Supercontinent's chief operations officer who came through when Akara was on duty. We gave her... Oh, what mod did we give her? It was right after Ariadne came up. So we have three questions. But first, we're going to offer her a drink. So we can play off her remorse, her ambition, or her stress. So we're going to play off of her ambition. Oh wait, that's the wrong one. Uh, I want to go to the left. Oh, and this is the absinthe that she wanted. So at the end of the day, she gets what she wants. Just a little bit over, then probably two ice cubes. So I got my absinthe on the rocks in the end. Yeah, 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 yeah! really know your game, though. This is the best glass of absinthe I've ever had. She seems power drunk. Time to attack. So we have a lot of options here. We can bluff about a few things. We can ask about the highest authority. We can ask about the program's legality. Will everything be ready for the unveiling of SBW next week? This is a bluff because nobody ever told us that it was being unveiled next week. We're just taking a shot in the dark and seeing what comes of it. We did manage to find out from that question that the unveiling is definitely not next week. Maybe. <laughs> and yeah, Donovan even comments that we should have gotten her in a more emotionally fragile state before we asked that question, which woof, what a way to phrase that but it really hammers home Donovan's own manipulations. Every implant user signs a contract before acquiring any upgrades. The fine print specifies that the user's physiology may be altered. It's supposed to be there to ensure a stable mind, body, environment, so the wearer can avoid conflicts with their upgrades. Yes, in the Ministry of Health, it's determined depression, anxiety, and such to be serious social hazards. Quite simple. When you use hardware developed by a corporation, you have to you have to comply with their firmware. You have to update your iPad, your PlayStation, nowadays even your microwave, just to keep them functioning. This is one step further. And Donovan counters that nobody reads the terms and conditions. And she's just like, well, tough shit. Serves me right for trying to reason with a corporate lawyer. So, here's the thing. I don't actually remember whether or not you need to use the amnesia pill before the third question, or if I can use it after and get six total instead of five. Um, if it's the former, I will just option select and say I didn't want to use it here anyway. <laughs> and if it's the latter, then I'll just use it now. Supercon is going through turbulent times right now. That's good, that spells change for a company. I've seen it many times, but in the process, there's usually a trail of casualties. And you are all, you have got a one-way ticket to becoming one of them. 
Didn't know corporate lawyers were in the business of extending such stylish death threats. Yeah, I mean, that's explicitly what it is. There are many fates worse than death when up against corporate law. Yeah, but that's not the veiled litigation threat that she seems to imply that it was when we know that there are literal bodies stacking up. Oh, and that's an interesting way to start off the next quiz. Is she a psychopath? We're going to talk more about that next time. For now, thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one, y'all.